hi all in today's lecture we will be discussing the concept of dividend now before we start discussing a small background to understand what is a dividend let's say there is x limited and a small balance sheet for x limited equity share capital 100 reserves and surplus 50 loan from bank 200 balance sheet total 350. Just an illustrative balance sheet. Let's say assets say fixed assets 300, current assets 50, totally 350. Small balance sheet. Now, company has two forms of funds in them. One is borrowings in the form of loan from bank and investors or shareholders investment in the form of equity share capital. Both of them are given money to the company for its operations to generate revenue every year and they will earn profits. Who takes a share of this profits the minute profit is earned or in other word earnings before interest and tax. First you have to pay interest on the loan because somebody is investing money they are borrowing lending money here you have to give them interest return. Once you pay interest, you will have earnings before tax. Next, you have to pay tax to the government. After I pay the taxes, you will have something called earnings after tax. Now, what do you do with this earnings after tax? Company can decide to either distribute this profits back to the shareholders. Why? Because the shareholders trusted the company and gave their money and they have the highest risk. If you follow carefully, after paying the interest, after paying the tax, if any money is left out, only then dividend will be paid to the equity shareholders because this is like return on the investment made by the shareholder. No. Company can decide to do two things. First option, the no dividend will be declared. Entire money is transferred to the reserves of the company. Entire money is transferred to their reserves from the profit. Can they do that? Yes. Then if amount of dividend declared is zero, if no dividend is declared, then these provisions won't even be applicable for the company. Second case, if the company is going to declare the dividend, then what has to be done? What are we going to see in these provisions? How much dividend can they declare? If they declare dividend, what is the procedure to be followed? It's all common sense guys, very very common sense. Think practically, assume you are the company. How much can I declare? What powers do I have? From where can I pay such dividend? What money can I use? Can I sell the fixed asset and pay dividend? No. From what money can you pay dividend? What is the procedure you have to follow? How to pay the dividend? Let's say there is some dispute in the future, some issue. There are two shareholders fighting saying this dividend belongs to me. What is the dispute? How to settle the dispute? company has declared dividend, they have not paid it later, then what is the liability against the company? All these things we will see in section 123 to 127. Let us proceed to understand the provisions of the Companies Act. In the previous section, we discussed the background for dividend chapter. Now let us proceed to section 123. In dividend chapter, section 123 is the biggest section. Now, what is section 123 saying? Here, if company wants to pay the dividend, what are the conditions or prerequisites that are essential? First, if company wants to pay the dividend, from where can it pay? From where can it pay the money? The provision is saying from current year profits. Obviously, we saw in the previous section, if company is not going to earn money, can they pay dividend? No. Therefore, from current year profits, they will pay the dividend. Let us assume, in our example, 
Current year company has made a loss. Current year company has made a loss. Then what they will do? They will use the previous year profits to pay the dividend, which is nothing but your free reserves. Nothing but your free reserves. So you can pay out of current year profits or from previous year profits or a combination of both or a combination of both. Also they are saying in certain cases the central government or state government will guarantee a company that we will pay dividend if you are not able to pay. In case of risky project, infrastructure projects, sometimes government gives guarantee. In those cases, if company is not having money, using the money that is guaranteed by central government or state government, they can use that money for paying the dividend. So this is the source of dividend from where they can pay the dividend. Next. Next stage of provisions. Current year profits coming to current year profits, what will be included and what will be excluded? Coming to the exclusions first. Now let's say in the year a fixed assets was revalued from 100 to 500. 400 rupees gain on revaluation. Can I use that gain for paying dividend? No. So the provision says these kind of exceptional items like gain on revaluation, forex gain, income which is nominal, which is not actually earned, like let's say all this forex gains, nominal gains, all these will not be included in the current year profit amount. You have to adjust them if it is already included in the current year profits. Now, before you compute current year profits, you have to check for the following points. You have to check for the following points. First, you have to check if the current year depreciation, which is supposed to be debited to the PL account, is debited or not. If it is not debited, please debit it. If there is any carry forward depreciation of previous years, adjust that also. Let's say company earned profits in the current year but had a losses in the previous year, let's say current year profits is 500, previous year accumulated loss is 300, you cannot show both separately and say my profit is 500, adjust both, current year profits adjust with the previous year losses, show the net amount, this is the amount which is available for paying the dividend. Now, let us say company is having current year profits, then they will pay out of current year profits. If they don't have current year profits or if the current year profits are not adequate, then they can pay from the reserves. The provision is saying, whenever you want to use your reserves, that is your previous year profits or called as free reserves, then there are some rules you have to follow. These rules are mentioned in Rule 3 Companies Declaration and Payment of Dividend Rules 2014. Let us now see what are these rules. When should I follow these rules? Only when the company is going to pay dividend out of its free reserves or previous year profits. In the previous section, we discussed what is section 123 saying. When do we come to rules? When current year profits is not adequate for payment of the dividend. Not adequate meaning it can either be loss or current year profit is not sufficient to pay the dividend. These are fairly simple rules. Rule number one, what are they saying? They are saying average rate meaning the rate of dividend that you want to declare in the current year should not be more than the average rate at which dividend is declared in the last three years. Let's say for the year 2017, 2018, 2019, dividend declared as 10%, 12%, 14%. Now, in the year 2020, if you want to use your reserves, then the rate should not exceed the average of these three rates, which is 
12 percent. 10 plus 12 plus 14 divided by 3. Rate for the current year should not exceed 12 percent. This is the first rule. However, in any of these three years, let's say in 2019, dividend is not even declared. Dividend is not even declared. Then this rule will not be applicable. Do not check this rule. Second, how much reserves can I use? Let's say, this is the balance sheet of the company. Paid up share capital 100. Free reserves, let's say, is 50. Can I use the entire 50? Can I use the entire 50? Provision is saying, you can use one tenth of your paid up share capital plus free reserves. What is one tenth of 150, which is nothing but I can only use amount of 15. So I can only withdraw 15 out of this 50 and not the entire amount. Third rule. What is third rule saying? Third rule is very simple. I will count to my accumulated profits or free reserves, previous year profits, only because current year is either a loss or profits are not adequate. Assume current year is loss and that is why you are using your reserves. The rule is saying this 15 which you are going to use first adjust with the current year loss. Assume current year losses 5. Adjust both and balance money available is only 10 because you need to adjust current year loss then show net amount of reserves then only this 10 can be used for declaring dividend. Last one, after declaring dividend and after using this money out of 50, I am using 15. So balance of reserves is how much? 50 minus 15 which is 35. The balance should be at least 10% of the paid up share capital. What is the 10% of paid up share capital? 10% of 100 is 10. Balance should be at least 10%. So it is more than 10%. Therefore, rule 4 is also satisfied. So you have to cumulatively satisfy all the 4 rules. Then once you satisfy all the 4 rules, take the amount that can be used for payment of dividend. This is about rule 3 of payment and declaration of dividend. In the previous section, we have understood what is dividend. Now let us see the two types of dividend before we proceed to the provisions. Final dividend and interim dividend. Final dividend and interim dividend. Final dividend is generally recommended by the board of directors and declared in the AGM by the shareholders by passing an ordinary resolution. You might have studied, board is recommending 8%. Can the shareholders declare by changing the 8%? Answer is no. They cannot increase the 8% or they cannot decrease the 8% also. They can only accept and pass the resolution. And once they pass the resolution, dividend will be declared. This is about final dividend. Interim dividend, to put it simply, any dividend which is declared between two AGMs of a company is interim dividend. Now, there is a small amendment here which says after the end of the financial year, before the AGM, let's say 31st March 20 is the end of the financial year, during this period also they can declare interim dividend. Can a company declare interim dividend? two times or three times or four times a year, absolutely their wish. There is no limit on number of times you can declare interim dividend. They can declare it any number of times. So this is about final dividend and interim dividend. The terms are important. Now let us proceed to the next concept. In the previous section, we have discussed about section 123, the important provisions in section 123. Now the section 124 talks about unpaid dividend account. So leave the number. Let us see the procedure. Once a company declares the dividend, 
what they have to do as per section 123 is transfer the money to a separate bank account within 5 days. Now, after declaring dividend, they will wait for 30 days. They will wait for 30 days to make all these payments. Correct? I cannot declare today and make the payment tomorrow. The law is giving them time of 30 days to make the, all the payments. Now, after 30 days, we will check if any amount is unpaid or unclaimed. What is the difference between unpaid and unclaimed? Unpaid means the company has not made the payment because of some fault of theirs. Unclaimed means let's say a company has given a check but the check has come back, the person has not collected, the post has gone, it's a wrong address. Any reason, dividend is not being claimed, not because of the fault of the company. After 30 days, what happens? This money should be any unpaid money or unclaimed money should be transferred to an account called unpaid dividend account. Such transfer should happen within 7 days from the expiry of the 30 days of declaration of dividend. After transferring to unpaid dividend account, within 90 days, Company should prepare a schedule. Company should prepare a schedule. What schedule? Breakup of this amount. Of the total amount, give a breakup. Which shareholder? What is the address of the shareholder? The details you have. Prepare a schedule and post this in the website of the company. Now, this money will remain in the unpaid dividend account for a period of 7 years for a period of 7 years after completion of 7 years this money will be transferred to IEPF now before you transfer to IEPF the provision says 3 months before you transfer to IEPF they are saying company should again try to find the shareholders and make the payment to them they have to make a newspaper ad. They have to complete some formalities, try to make the payment. And even after the three months, if still they are not able to make the payment, then the money will be transferred to IEPF. What money will be transferred? Only the dividend amount or even the shares along with the dividend. Both unclaimed dividend along with the shares, both will be transferred to Investor Education and Protection Fund. Tomorrow the shareholder, after 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, realizes he has to get some money, he can represent to IEPF, give his proof, valid proof, then he can get the money from IEPF. Both he will get his dividend and the shares. So this is about section 124. Now let us proceed to section 125. Section 125 is a fairly simple, straightforward section. This is IEPF, Investor Education and Protection Fund. is a fund maintained by the government. What are the sources? What are the ways in which the fund will get money? And what are the purpose for which the funds can be spent? If you see fairly the point says for IEPF, the funds, the source can be dividend, unclaimed dividend, Shares along with the dividend, deposits which have matured but have not been claimed or paid, preference shares which were redeemed but not claimed by the preference shareholder. These cases, all these money will be transferred, source for IEPF. For what purpose can this money be used? It cannot be used by government for their expenses, no. Money will be kept over there, they are like a custodian. But however, money can be used for production of investors. For creating some awareness programs for any suit against the government for in, in issue of these. Then if somebody is going to make a claim after 15, 20 or 30 years, you can make the payment to those people. This is about section 124 and 125. Now let us proceed to section 126 and 127. Now, today share transfer happens using DMAT, online 
So transfer happens in fraction of second. But in earlier days, there used to be something called a transfer T. Where the transferor will write a deed and submit to the company. Then company will transfer the shares to the transfer. This process will take some time. Now, what is section 126 saying is, during the transfer process, if there is some dispute in relation to ownership, let's say A is selling the shares to B. During this process, C is informing the company saying, A is not the owner of the shares. C, I am the owner of the shares. Dispute is going on. Company does not know who the owner is. Therefore, during this dispute, until the issue is settled, if the company is going to issue any right shares, bonus shares or any benefits which are going to be given to the shareholder, then they will not know whether they should give it to A or B or C. Until the dispute is settled, it will be kept in abeyance. That is, such a benefit, either bonus or rights, will be kept on hold and once the dispute is settled, it will be given to the person who get, gets the share. Section 127. What is section 127 talking about? Section 127 says, once a company declares a dividend, they have to pay within 30 days. If company fails to make such payment, then the director is liable for imprisonment up to 2 years and also he has to pay fine per day during which the default continues up to rupees 1000 per day. Let's say there is 10 days delay then 10 into 1000, 10,000 rupees he has to pay along with interest of 18% on the amount that is payable to the shareholder, 18% per annum. We would have also seen another provision which talks about 12% interest. I did not intentionally discuss this in section 124. You should not get confused. Section 127, 18 is the penalty for director and the company. The company has to pay 18% interest on the amount that is outstanding. However, in section 124, we saw that the money unpaid amount unpaid dividend account, money should be transferred to this account within 7 days after expiry of 30 days. If they delay here, then they have to pay 12% interest. If they declare dividend and don't pay within 30 days, then they have to pay interest of 18%. This is about section 127. However, if company fails to pay dividend, then this is the penalty. But there are some exceptions for this rule. What are these exceptions? Let us discuss what are the exceptions in section 127. Due to operation of law, dividend is not paid. Let's say tomorrow, government puts a notification saying, banking companies are struggling because of the COVID pandemic. Therefore, banking companies need not pay dividend. Let's say a banking company declared a dividend and before they made the payment, government announced this rule. Then because of operation of law, dividend is not paid, which is not the fault of the company. There is a dispute. We saw in the previous section, A, B and C, true ownership is not known. Then in this case, if still there is a dispute pending, until the dispute is solved, dividend will not be paid. Next. You have studied in your school days a concept called calls in arrear. Practically today it is not applicable, but still you have studied a concept called calls in arrear. 10 rupees share, 8 paid up, 2 has yet to be paid. Now, let's say there is a shareholder from whom I have to receive 2 rupees. He has not paid calls in arrears. Now, I have to pay, let's say, to every shareholder. Rupees 5 as dividend per share. What I can do? I can adjust these both set off and pay him net amount of rupees 
3 lawfully adjusted with the dues of the shareholder let's say the shareholder has given some instructions he says don't transfer the money to my account transfer it break it into five parts and transfer to my five sons if he has given some set of instructions company has to follow those instructions however if company is not able to follow those instructions to make the payment company has to inform the shareholder that we cannot follow these instructions then if company communicates to the shareholder that the given instructions cannot be followed then they are not at fault only if they communicate the same those instructions if they are simple and it can be done then company cannot give it as an excuse last one for any other reason which is not the fault of the company then company is not liable for imprisonment or interest or any penalty when i say company is not liable for imprisonment it does not mean company will go to jail the director who is representing the company will not be liable for imprisonment so this is about dividend chapter in the live class let us discuss exhaustively past examination questions thank you